Our next guest saw firsthand the profound impact Geraldine Ferraro made upon women. He was on the floor in 1984 during Ferraro's acceptance speech as she took on the new role of Democratic vice presidential candidate. Joining us here on the set is Peter Pizer, who was then Congresswoman Ferraro's first chief of staff. Nice to see you, Peter. Thanks for having me, Greta. You know, she'd probably kill us if we were morose and sad tonight because that wasn't her personality at all. She was tough, wasn't she? Not at all. She's very tough. And, in fact, just a couple weeks ago, I had the chance to spend a couple hours with her uh, visiting in, in her uh, home in New York. And... And we were talking about today's politics and, and what's coming up in the future and American politics and, and then up in our families. And she was very much looking ahead. And, and uh, right up to the end, she was thinking about the issues that we're all talking about all the time and, and had her very strong opinions always. You know, whether you agreed with her or not, I don't think you can deny the fact that she was truly passionate about her positions and she really gave a damn. And she, you know, this was not just some sort of game with her of being a politician. She really cared. Oh, she really did. And, and you know, you, your last segment about the 2008 campaign and some of the controversies that came around that, I mean, that was really just Jerry speaking out about fairness, speaking out about the importance of everyone being treated the same. And it, she got called out by people who didn't understand Viciously. what she was saying. And, uh, and it was a very difficult time for her. We were working very closely at that time. And, and uh, that was a very difficult time for her, feeling as if people weren't really getting the message that she was delivering. But the attack came from within the Democratic Party, too. I mean, yeah. I mean the, the Republicans weren't calling her out. On it. it was her own party that she had devoted her life to. Yeah, that's true. And, and I think, uh, obviously, when, when any party sees a fight going on in the other party, it's smart to just stand back yeah, and, they love and, it. and yeah, let it happen. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it, it was a very difficult time for Jerry. I mean, she was a strong Democrat, and uh, she wanted the Democratic Party to succeed, and, and it did in 2008. And I think as the campaign went forward, she, she felt better about, about how the party came together. But that in that part of the campaign, it was a very difficult time while she was still sort of transitioning from her hard work for, uh, for Senator Clinton. All right. Rewind. Um, 1984 was like yeah. on the floor that, yeah. uh, that evening. Yeah. Well, you know, I was uh, with Jerry in San Francisco working on the Democratic Platform Committee when the call came from Minnesota. And uh, I was uh, called from my hotel saying, get over here to her hotel. And uh, everything started happening very quickly. And, and those few days and that convention were one of the most amazing experiences that I've ever had in politics. And I think that that was true for everyone who was there. Uh, on the floor that night, uh, you had uh, uh, a lot more, a lot higher percentage of women on the floor than you had had the previous nights at the convention. Most of the men who were delegates gave their passes away to the alternates or or others who uh, were women who would really enjoy being there. And, and it was a terrific uh, experience to see her up on that podium uh, speaking. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I, I don't think I've ever had an experience like that in my career, and, and there wasn't a dry eye in the house. I think everybody was excited about it. I mean, if, yeah. if you're old enough to remember it, that, uh, and it didn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. I mean, even Governor Palin was talking about you know, how mm -hmm. she was excited about it. Yeah. And, um, and I guess, and even, and even, you know, it's interesting about uh, uh, Geraldine Ferraro is that, she, you know, she, she could disagree with you, and she, but she still wanted women to succeed profoundly. I mean, you know, even with Palin was a good example. Yeah, and, and as she said uh, and, and on what you said, showed a few minutes ago, she would uh, always uh, have differences with some female candidates uh, of, very, of varying stripes, but she always supported them as women on the ticket, whatever office they were running from or running for. And she, you know, she really believed that women needed, needed the opportunity to make their case, and, and she would not go after a woman running for office. And certainly when, Democrat, when Democratic women were running, she would not back a candidate. Uh, against them. Well, she was tough, and uh, yeah. she certainly, uh, uh, she certainly left a mark. She left a huge <laughs> mark, and you know, I, I was with her in the '84 campaign, and and went to a number of events, uh, traveled with her, and you would see three generations of women sure coming to those events in the thousands. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't all vote for the ticket. But. Peter, thank you. Great to have you. Great coming to be up, here. A flashback to 1984, the first.